The Oslo International Bible College graduation ceremony will begin in one minute. Please find your seat at this time as we await the OIBC class of 2013. Today is a day of great joy, but also sorrows. We are celebrating the conclusion of two years of studies for 43 students. Students who have invested two years of their lives in studying at OIBC and made many sacrifices to reach this point. What a joy it is. However, along with the joy comes the sorrow of this perhaps being the last time several of us will see each other this side of heaven. Yet, um, some persons just never seem to go away. <laughs> Which, of course, could be annoying and a bad thing. Um, but in this case, it is most pleasant and wonderful. Today's graduation sermon speaker is Paul Omayo. Paul is a former student of OIBC, graduating with honors last year. He is uh, currently pursuing a master's degree at Menets Fakulteta, the Norwegian School of Theology. Uh, Paul is a board member of OIBC. He pastors uh, Oslo International Family Church, an English-speaking congregation in downtown Oslo, ministering the Word of God to over a hundred people every week. We also have the intention of hiring Paul as a teacher and administration member here at OIBC this coming school year. Wow. Paul is uh, married to Doreen, and they have a beautiful daughter, Lavenda. It is a great privilege to invite my former student and future co-worker to preach the word to us. Please welcome Pastor Paul O'Mai. Thank you, Simon. I think that is uh, a very big shoe that you put me in. <laughs> but thank you for the opportunity and uh, greetings to all of you. And thank you for our wonderful singer. And uh, <laughs> it's wonderful to, to listen to you. And uh, to the graduating class, uh, I remember last year when we were graduating, you people were here cheering us. And we have been with you at least for one year, so I know most of you. And I had a privilege of being uh, the chairman of the student council, so we worked with some of you together. And uh, it's good to see you graduate, but it's also a challenge that uh, the Lord is giving unto you. And uh, this morning I just have a few minutes to share the word of the Lord to all of us. Now I'd like us to read from the book of Philippians chapter 3. And verse 7. And uh, you'll bear with me to read the word of the Lord. Because I believe this is a Bible school. And there is nothing more important than the word of the Lord. You can get the certificates. You can get all the other skills from here. But I believe the vision and the mission of this school is that the word of the Lord can be hidden in our lives. And that is more important. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. I once thought all things were so very important. But now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the priceless gain of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. I have discarded everything else, counting it all garbage, so that I may have Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own goodness or on my ability to obey the law. But I trust Christ to save me. For God's way of making us right with him depends on faith. As a result, I can really know I can really know Christ 
and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead, I can learn what it means to suffer with him, sharing in his death, so that somehow I can experience the resurrection from the dead. I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things, or I have already reached perfection, but I keep working towards that day when I will finally be all that Christ saved me for and wants me to be. No, dear brothers and sisters, I am still not all I should be, but I'm focusing on, on all my energies on one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what is lies ahead. I strain to reach the end of the race and receive the prize for which God, through Jesus Christ, is calling us up to heaven. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for every one of us, Lord. And thank you for your word and for the good work that you are doing in this school, in the lives of the students and the staff and the community, and even all those who are friends and relatives who have been touched by what you're doing in these students, Lord. It's a great day to see them, Lord, make one of a great milestone in their lives. And yet you are reminding us that, Lord, your calling is higher than this. I pray that may you bless us as we share your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I have read from the book of Philippians, and uh, the book of Philippians was written by Paul the Apostle, and he had the privilege to start this, was the first church in Europe. Actually, in my class, those who graduated last year, we had the privilege through the school to go to a tour in Greece, and we went through all the, the churches that Paul started while in his first mission to Europe. And actually, we were in Philippi, in the prison. I even entered in that prison, <laughs> or what they say used to be the prison, where he was put with Silas when they were preaching the gospel. And uh, this was a very important church to Paul, being his first church in Europe. And actually, it's a very important historical church, even to the European continent, which is proud of a Christian heritage, which they can never do away with. It remains their history because that's how God intended it to be. And they took Christianity, they took all their resources, and they invested and they spread the gospel to many parts of the world. Many of us come to Norway, but we have been touched by missionaries who came from Europe. Yeah. And that's why the gospel reached us. And uh, I have a very special attachment to this church. But Paul here is writing from Rome. He's in prison for the sake of the gospel. And uh, by the way, Paul was from a very rich family and he was very educated. By that time, he attained the highest degree of education under the professor Gamaliel. And in those days, it's only rich people who will afford to take their children to learn under a special teacher like that. And while he was, he felt that he has reached the top of his achievements in life, being a professor of the law and being in the administration of the Pharisees, God calls him by meeting him on the way. And then all his plans change. And this high-ranking man, Jewish man, and very proud, as they are always, find himself in a prison in Rome without food, without family, without the prestige, and without anything. But instead of being bitter and counting all the lost things that are behind him, he chooses to write this letter. And it's a letter he's thanking the Philippians because they stood with him in his difficult times. They gave him money and they even sent some of the people to help him. But one thing is that this Philippian church, it seemed that some of the Christians, they had thought that having received Christ, they had arrived. And they felt that everything now was okay in their lives. But Paul writes to them and reminds them that we are in a race. 
from where I read. And he said that once we are saved, we have not arrived. We are not yet perfect. There is no space to relax and to be complacent. The Christian life is a continuous race. It's a marathon. It needs working. It needs training. It needs investment in terms of energy, time, and it's not easy. For the graduates, you have been here for two years and you have been taught the word of the Lord. And I will encourage you that as you go out, the light that God has put into your hands is a responsibility. It's not going to be easy. For this Christian life needs a lot of investment. Many times we think being Christian or serving the Lord is something we do as a hobby. Or is something we can do when we have overtime. But it really needs investment. You need to invest the whole of your life. And it's a worthy investment. And this is what Paul is reminding the Philippians. That we must press on towards the goal and which is the price. We must keep on moving. We must pursue what we have been taught here. But we must also focus. I come from Kenya, a small country in East Africa. And uh, we are well known for being very good in running. Although myself, I'm not. <laughs> and if you look at the Olympics and uh, World Championship, and uh, many times the Kenyan flag will always go up because the gold and the silver belongs to us. Now the bronze and the rest we can share with our brothers and sisters. <laughs> and uh, mostly we specialize in marathon, the long distance learning, because our brothers from Jamaica, we give them the short ones. We know. <laughs> And uh, there's something very interesting when people run a marathon. It's that many start, but you know after two, three kilometers, and uh, maybe it's a 10 kilometer race, some people get tired, but the Kenyans know the trick. They relax in the beginning, but they keep the pace. They know, they don't lose their, their touch because the Ethiopians watch them very carefully. But there is something that happens in a marathon. As you are running, you have many spectators. And as you are on the road, there are many people who like you. Others snap you photos. Others see you tired. And even some others are very kind. And they can even offer you a bottle of water or a bottle of juice. And if you concentrate and take your time, maybe even someone to give you a kiss or even give you flowers, because they have come to watch you. And you forget that you're in a race and you go for the flowers and you say, oh, thank you so much. Thank you for thinking about me. Or you take the juice and you sit down and you relax and say, oh, I've been running for five kilometers. It's really God who sent you to give me this glass of water. You lose it. When you're running, you don't concentrate on the things that will come on your way. Because you have a price. You have a focus. There is something that you are running towards. And that is the picture of a Christian life. As you move out of school, there are many distractions which will come your way. Good opportunities and good things will come and will beck on you. The pleasures of the world will be on the road and they'll be waiting for you. But you need to focus. If you get distracted, and enjoy the juice and the flowers and the good photos and you post very nicely, you miss the price. We must focus. But what is the goal? In verse, 10, in verse 8 to 10, Paul says that we have a two-sided goal. The main goal of a Christian life is to live for Christ. And secondly, it is to serve Him. So as you graduate, God is looking and to your life to live for him, but also to serve, to serve him. In chapter 2, verse 14 to 16, Paul encourages the Philippians to shine as stars in this dark and deprived generation. In YBC, God has put a candle on your hand. Some of you maybe came here without so much light in their lives. Some of you 
just came here because you are trying to look for a way forward in your life. But having seated here for two years, as Rohit was testifying, and I know the testimonies of many of you because I've interacted with you, is that through the teachings that you have received in OIBC, God has put a light to your candle. Yes. And now you sit here, somehow you feel that you have a purpose in life. You feel that you have a candle that you're holding. I want to challenge you. The world is dark. People are broken. Yes. 